I know your breasts weren't satisfied with the Xbox Bethesda showcase, and neither were my breasts. You have feathers on your breasts, and I have hair on my breasts. Bird breasts, bird breasts, bird breasts, bird breasts, bird breasts. Skip it up and that up. So yesterday was the Xbox Bethesda Showcase, and we finally saw some gameplay of Starfield and Redfall, and uh, it 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 was bad. It it wasn't good. It was awful. It was not impressive at all. And this is a person who, for some reason, this generation of consoles, people have called me a Microsoft fanboy and a Sony hater. I don't know why, but they do. But I think all that goodwill I got from the Xbox fanboy community is going to go out the window because I was not impressed with what I saw yesterday. So the main thing I'm going to focus on here is Starfield. It, I think it's safe to say, is the most hype game coming from Bethesda. It's Skyrim in space, essentially, or Fallout in space. And there's a huge base of people that are still huge fans of Bethesda games, even after Fallout 76 was a complete disaster. Well, anyway, the gameplay trailer actually caused a lot of people to go, wait a second... This game kind of looks and plays like No Man's Sky to the point that major publications were making comparison videos and people were like, yeah, this does look like No Man's Sky, except more bland. IGN actually posted this on Twitter and the resemblance is kind of startling. Take a look. According to the scanners. to be one of many scattered across the galaxy if we can find more we can unlock their secrets beautiful isn't it and you can build your own outposts these act as a home away from home for survival and resource generation you can choose where and how to build each one and you can hire characters you meet to keep it up and running it's our most flexible yet you can customize all the elements of how you look. Now, on top of that, too, yes, Starfield still has a long way to go with development. The performance looked choppy, and from what I heard, that wasn't the stream. That was the actual gameplay that was running that rough. The combat, I understand it's it's a Bethesda game, and it, that's not the main reason you're playing a, a Bethesda game. The combat does not look great it just felt really rough all around and i wasn't the only person saying that david jaffe the creator of god of war i'm actually a sub to him or a member to his youtube channel i enjoy watching his stuff uh he's been a very very avid supporter of xbox game pass and he saw a bunch of red flags yesterday too with the showcase from Microsoft, and he wonders if the subscription model is a good choice for the future of gaming. This is what he had to say, and he also had some choice words for Microsoft themselves on how they handle their exclusives. Take a look. Anyway, the show was terrible. The show needed to plant a flag and say, the waiting is over. We have the coolest, most commercial-friendly, most consumer-friendly, system and business model that has ever existed in this industry. You guys know I love Game Pass. You know I love the vision. These motherfuckers cannot produce games. I'm sorry. And when they when they trot out Sea of Thieves, which may be great. I've never played it. But you know what? All of their original IP so far is C plus B minus level. It just is. It doesn't have the heart of Nintendo it doesn't have the polish of Sony. It doesn't have the creativity and artistry of Sony. And I'm just like, you know, I'm a believer in Game Pass. I am not a believer in Microsoft product development. I'm sorry, you guys are not good at this. Get someone in there who knows what they're doing. There's a lot of people at this point who do. Uh, Redfall looks absolutely generic. Starfield 
And again, it, very few of these games I won't play. And some of these games may become my favorite games of the year. There was that one game that looked like a blocky Legend of Zelda with the girl with the sword, and it was very D&D. That may be great, right? I mean, uh, Starfield may be great. It's cool you can build your ship, and it's, it's, you know, I think the minute they have all these planets to explore, I just have visions of landing on a planet. There's not much to do, but let's assume, give them the benefit of the doubt. They haven't earned it, but for sure, why not? Um, but like Rathi in our chat was saying, I'd rather them just have 10 planets and focus on handcrafted experiences. Um, but it could work, right? Um, it's, it's not that what they showed was terrible. It's that they, the fact that they either didn't know that this holiday season for them and these next 12 months is crucial, or they know it and they can't deliver, but nothing as a gamer made me go, Ooh. And He's 100% right. I know there's people that are going to be angry with that. And yes, I understand whether you liked the showcase yesterday or not was subjective, but it's kind of the same take I'm seeing across the board. And right now I'm looking at the list of games coming out for 2022 and 2023 for Xbox, whether it be, you know, multi-plats or exclusives. 2022 especially. (laughs) I mean, Overwatch 2, sure, but th- there is nothing there that is a must-have. And Microsoft, you bought all of these companies, and I understand that, look, I said this before and have defended Microsoft that, that these games don't come overnight, and they have to be developed, and I don't want to see developers crunch, but... Man, the software lineup is looking anemic, and you showed some of the most heavily hyped games yesterday. And yes, I understand their works in progress, but Redfall sounded and looked like a first-person shooter Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And the combat, again, in another game from Bethesda, just, it seemed really generic. And the voice acting seemed like voice acting from Back for Blood, and the voice acting was one of the key things that killed that game for me. I, I couldn't take it. The voice acting, even though I kind of liked the way the guns felt in Back for Blood and it felt good enough to play, the voice acting was that god awful that it made me stop. It, you got to offer more. I know it's going to take time, and I'm not going to be as heavily judgmental on Microsoft now if it's 2020. Four and the same thing is happening over at Microsoft. Oh, I'm going to rip them a new one. But I'll be a little more understanding now. But that showcase wasn't a good look. And yes, yeah, Starfield does look like a more generic version of No Man's Sky. Which, yes, I know No Man's Sky started out rough, but it's had a lot of improvements over the years. The bottom line is, Microsoft, if you want people to sign up for Game Pass and stay signed up for Game Pass, you have to continually have games that they want to play. You know, and there's a lot of people that are going to sign up to Game Pass for the AAA games, and that's exclusively what they're there for. I'm sure there's plenty of indie gems on there. I hear you and agree with you. But there's a ton of people that are like, no, man, I'm, I'm here. You've talked about, and you have, Microsoft. You've pushed the fact that your AAA first-party exclusives are going to be on Game Pass day one. And that's what a lot of people signed up for. And if you don't have AAA exclusives at all for anyone to play day one on Game Pass, what are people signing up for? And a lot of people, like I've seen on Twitter, have said, yeah, I'm going to pause my subscription until there's games to play. Because think about it. Say you're only a AAA game kind of person and Microsoft has no AAA games that you want to play for an entire year and you're spending $15 a month on Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, you're better off just buying a couple AAA games a year and not paying for the subscription because you think about it, you're spending $15 a month. Even if you spend the $10 a month on just the PC Game Pass or Xbox Game Pass, meaning you just have it for PC or you just have it for console, that's $120. Bucks. What happens if there's only one game that you want to play an Xbox Game Pass, you're still spending double the money you'd spend that year. So I think things will come around for Microsoft. I do. But that showing yesterday, just it makes me have concerns about a subscription-only future. And the other thing I've seen people say too, well, I have Xbox Game Pass, so if it sucks, who cares? But that means is that you're what people are saying, who say that anyway, 
is that they're okay with the quality of games going down because they're not paying as much. So you don't care that your AAA experiences no longer are going to be AAA? That's concerning that people are saying that because now we have these powerful consoles. I believe the jump from 8th generation consoles to ninth generation consoles was substantially bigger than from 7th gen to 8th gen. And now developers aren't going to put all of their heart and soul into there because it's on a subscription service and they feel that they can get away with it. And games are going to take a step back when we have more powerful hardware that we can actually get those immersive experiences. That would suck. So I don't know. It, 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 it kind of yesterday that that whole presentation kind of showed me the weaknesses of having a subscription service. And look, Starfield may end up being amazing. And I hope it is. But what I saw yesterday just didn't look good. And I can understand why a lot of people are annoyed that they have Xbox Game Pass and no games they really want to play on it. This is Rich of Review Tech USA signing out. Have a good one. <laughs>